Evening. Just a bit of a disclaimer before tonight's show, as we are saying from here on in on every episode, and a just a basically a um, an important announcement about a very important organization, a very important charity, in that of the National MS Society. Uh, National MS Society is a collective of passionate individuals who want to do something about multiple sclerosis now to move together forward in a world free of multiple sclerosis ms doesn't ms stops people from moving but the national ms society exists to make sure that multiple sclerosis doesn't to contact the national ms society please contact 1-800-344-4867 or go to our website at nationalmssociety.org again 1-800-344 Four eight six seven, or you can visit them at nationalmssociety.org. And on that, let's begin. How do I best personify a week that was a week of things? It's by having a conversation about anything and everything. This is the Venture Forward, but you have talks. Good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon, wherever you may be, and welcome to the VF Talks, the Venture Forward. I am John Venturini, and I am glad we are here on a Friday yet again. I am here 
I'm glad I'm here. I'm also glad that that cantankerous Triceratops is is here too. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad he's here. Really glad he's here. Just really glad he's here. For sure. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Um, I wasn't lying in the pre-roll, was I? It, it's been a week. It's really been a week. It's been... Oh, so many things. So many things. My God, so many things. Um, But before we begin, let's say hi to who's on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Christina, how are you? Glad you're here tonight. She says hi to me and hi to Rex. Rex? I, I always knew you had a thing for her. I'll tell her that, sure. Rex says hi. Rex, Rex is asking how you're doing. Don't I, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. Christina also says miss you, Rex. You miss her too? Okay. Rex misses you as well. There you go. You got Rex to talk. Of course, through me. But you got Rex to talk. So, 10 points. I was gonna, I was gonna cut something as far as a pre-roll, and I was gonna say, hey, um, at least the room's not spinning right now, and I, I ended up not going with that pre-roll. The fact is, still dropping things all over the place. That, that machine was that 7T MRI. I just the uh, the level of shaking that you go through going in that machine, going. Getting uh, brought in and brought out. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Well, it's, but it's part of figuring out what's going on, right? It's part of figuring out exactly how bad the demyelination is, how bad the MS is. So, And, you know, as I, as I mentioned, I believe on the show last night, it's part of a study. So anything I do to help out, you know, I'm going to do that. I was able to find a DVD drive to look at the pictures, but I haven't gotten them over to my folder yet. But yeah, it had me stop and, and think for a second. One, I have no idea what a spot or a lesion looks like at that level of degree. And I'm hoping that um, my neurologist will say something one way or another. But um, it was really interested, interesting to see it at that level of degree. So... For all the shaking and whatnot, there was definitely something to be said about what you got back in return for it. So, there's that. Weight-wise, I'm close to breaking the twos. I, I am within this much of breaking the twos, which will be great. That that will be the first time I will have been below 200 pounds since 2002. Think about that for a second. Think about... Think about the, the moment of, of how much that means. I haven't seen a number that started with one since 2002, early 2003. So there's, there's 18 years there, right? So I'm just keep on going, keep on doing my thing. In fact, not to, not to plug the Tuesday show, but we're going to talk about health overall. And we're going to talk about how everything basically talks to each other as far as the weight loss journey as far as everything else kind of did that on the show thursday but it was it was the sort of thing where i'm just i'm amazed by how everything is connected it's just it's mind-blowing it's absolutely mind-blowing so there's that um and then I kind of teased it on the show yesterday, but I, I hope to get someone to, to tell their story with respect to not necessarily um, the MS, but also living with someone or having a loved one who has it and what you can do as far as you know, going to the doctor and finding what sort of recourse there is and what sort of medication and all that stuff. Um, looking forward to that too. Will with it will it be Thursday? I don't know. I'm hoping it will be. If not, it'll probably be the week after. Um but yeah, that's uh that's my story. And as they say, I'm sticking to it. Uh 
I got a little surprise at the end of tonight's episode. It's a little bit of a a tribute and homage to two really incredible live streamers who uh, wrapped up uh, at least a regular run of their show this past Wednesday. So we'll see that and you'll hear the very rarely heard version of the full theme song with the lyrics. So you'll get that tonight too. Um, as far as the weekend, I don't know. I don't know about the. We- there's supposed to be snow coming. I heard there's. I heard there's snow coming. It's supposed to be um, at least 10 to 14 here in the uh, Philadelphia area. So here comes winter after a long hiatus, right? We There was a little bit of a, an event earlier in the winter, but a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago. But this one, this one looks to be a legitimate one with uh, the potential of seeing a nor'easter. Yes, a nor'easter. So... That will be something to, to really look at. Yeah, I guess the funny thing is that we're still about a couple months away from being a full year out from the thing that we can't talk about and explain because, again, monetization. But um, it's interesting to see not everybody rush into work even when it's not snowing. And then, well, if it's snowing now and then... You know, the DOT's out there insulting and brining all the wor- uh, all the roads. So, you know, you definitely know no one's going to be out there. So, just a very interesting time we're living in, for sure. Uh, I guess the other thing I wanted to say is that outside of just the weight loss journey and the sobriety and everything and, and, and you know, no compulsive gambling. I I think seeing everything work together and, and just getting an understanding of how everything is cemented into the story, into my life, um, has been a very interesting thing to behold, but also a very interesting thing to to kind of put on paper, but also to put in front of a camera and, and to share with all of you really incredible people. And again, I am very thankful for all of you. Um, but it's, um, it's really, really just, it, the story gets more and more interesting and just as life is right. Life for all of us. I, I think we've been dealing with so many different things over the last 12 months that I think we're all going through that sort of level of introspection and that sort of realizing that, Hey, this is, this is life. This is, we got to be careful of things that we never thought we ever had to be careful of. And, you know, be very careful in what we, what we hear and what we do and what, you know, all that we, we have a reliance to the people that, that run organizations that, that, that are in the government that, that run, you know, federal bureaus like uh, the CDC and and CMS and all that. I mean, it's very important. So I think there's more of a an increased, not necessarily increased sort of scrutiny on these organizations, but people are being very careful about what they consume. But moreover, they're being very careful about their own life. So anyhow. I got Sarah joining us on YouTube. Here for five. How you doing? Doing well, Sarah. I hope you're doing well, too. Um, it might be a very quick uh, VF talk tonight, but I'm glad to be able to get in front of camera and at least talk about what's going on um, for sure. Uh, let's see. What else? I, I think the other thing is you think about where I've been with the uh, the weight loss story, where I've been with the sobriety, where I've been with the compulsive gambling, I, I know there are other things I'm working on. There are other things I need to have a better accountability for. And over the next few weeks on the Venture Forward, we're going to start talking about that. We're going to take another look at the co-addiction story, the codependency, co- yeah, codependency story, because I think... That's something that a lot of folks are dealing with right now uh, within their own families and their own friends and their own social circles. So we'll 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 examine that in the coming weeks, take another look at that and see what that means, not only to my story, but to other stories as well. 
Yeah, Marilyn joining us on YouTube. Good afternoon, JV and Sarah. Hope you're doing well. Good afternoon, Marilyn. Hope you're doing well as well. I'm glad you're here this afternoon. Yeah, that's a that's definitely one of the topics I want to touch upon outside of more more attention around MS, more attention around the Mile Nation and telling that story. Um, I also want to start focusing on what that sort of mind body relationship is as far as overall health. Tuesday's conversation is going to be health in general, but we're going to start digging in more about the mental piece about it again, like we did with the depression and the anxiety, because I think those two worlds are basically very much aligned, very much joined at the hip. Uh, at that point, I also want to put in a plug for my email address because if there are things you want to see on the Venture Forward, if there are questions, if you want me to cover a topic, email me. Uh, I can be emailed at theventureforward at gmail.com. Again, theventureforward at gmail.com. I, um, I am looking for anybody, uh, any idea you have, any any sort of story you want to tell because... The other thing about doing this is I love to have people share their story because I think from hearing the story, we grow too. We, we find the isomorphisms that are true in our life and then we start making a move about that. So uh, if you have a story idea or you want to be a guest on The Venture Forward, please email me, theventureforward at gmail.com. Uh... I guess the other thing I wanted to say is this. Um, at some point, outside of bringing on uh, a dear friend of mine who who has really a story about MS and, and the sort of, uh, I guess, tricky divide that one goes through, whether you have it or you have family members that have it, I, I also want to get the sense of what that sort of thing means for, you know, when that person who, you know, for, for someone whose daughter or son has MS, for someone whose, you know, grandkids have MS, that sort of, it's not necessarily you, but your family. I, I think I, I would definitely want to shed more light on that piece because there is something that is to be said and something to be reminded of the fact that when we go through things like this, even when it is something like MS, it does affect our family. It does affect our friends. It does affect the people that, that that are around us, that care about us, that we care about them. So I'd love to get that sort of take on that as well. Uh, I think outside of that, I mean, I, I, this might be the quickest episode of EF Talks um, ever. Uh, the Ecamm link is down right by the, uh, the title on the bottom. If you want to join... Jump in. I'll be on for another five, ten minutes. Would love to have uh, anybody join me for a conversation about anything and everything. If not, you know, then we will put a bow on it really quickly. Um, I think the other thing is, as I talked about the snow, I talked about potential nor'easter. Um, I think the thing is, I am really looking forward to the spring. I don't know why that came out so quickly like that, but I mean, I think the moment that we turn that corner and we get to the spring and the summer, I think that changes a lot of people's moods, a lot of people's perceptions. We get a, a better understanding of, you know, just what vitamin D is and, and just being outside, even if we're wearing masks, even we, if we are socially distancing, I think if we could turn that corner, I, I know at least for me, I'm looking at something that is um, important for that turn, getting out of the, the cold winter and moving to the spring. Got a question about wanting to know more about MS. I will talk a bit to that. MS is basically multiple sclerosis. It, it talks to exactly having multiple scars. That's what multiple sclerosis stands for. Um, many people don't know exactly where MS comes from. You ask any neurologist, any sort of doctor, it could come from a whole stream of different things. It could come from Epstein-Barr virus. It can come from a whole slew of different places for sure. So um, 
MS is something that affects millions. It, it definitely is a number that I think is underreported somewhat. There is a certain demographic that it tack, that that it touches more than others. Um, I think you know you'll ask a lot of neurologists that will say that MS does affect those that I think it affects more females than males, but that number is growing a bit. Um, as far as how you find out you have MS, well, it starts with any sort of uh, neurological event. In my case, it was uh, having desensitization or numbing over here, numbing over my left eye, numbing over my right eye in the event of 2011, numbing below the eye, numbing in my upper jaw, my mouth. Um, you'll notice other neurological things like bad handwriting, Neurological traits like short-term memory. In my case, you'll also have muffled sort of hearing out your right ear. So it, it could be a slew of many different symptoms. And the thing about MS is it's very much an individualized disease. It, it, it affects people in different ways because the lesions that appear in your brain or down your spinal column could be different lesions. In my case, my lesions were first there in 2011 in the last six to eight weeks, there have been lesions and other things that have formed in other parts of that myelin sheath in my brain. And of course, that caused the exacerbation that caused a lot of that sort of um, just fuzziness, that sort of it's it's that sort of erratic feeling it when it affects the hearing. It could be something like you can't be in a room that's very loud because things start doubling in the ear. Um, looking at something could be very hard to look at because your optic nerve is freezing. So it's it's a sort of thing where it really is much an individualized disorder depending on the person. A couple of people joined us. Uh, Hey, Sherry, how are you? Hope you're doing well. And me answering the question, I'd like to know more about MS. Yeah, MS, MS is definitely something where um, is very much an individualized disorder, but an organization that knows a lot about MS is the MS Society. And we talked about that number before. I'm going to bring up the number again. The MS Society is a very important organization in that of trying to find a cure trying to find a disease-modifying treatment that will, once and for all, end multiple sclerosis in our country. If you want to know more about MS and the multiple sclerosis and demyelination and other sort of underlying disorders that are tied to it, call 1-800-344-4867 or go to nationalmssociety.org. Again, 1-800-344-4867. Uh, it's an incredible organization that is doing so much for MS and is a charity and foundation that does so much for the folks that have it and their families. It's something I am definitely a big, big, big supporter of. And even now more that I have it, I become even a larger supporter of it because it's important that we all know about it. Some people joining us in the meantime, we got... Murd saying, good afternoon where I'm from my, in my neck of the woods. Good afternoon to you, Murd. Hope you're doing well. Mr. Burke, how are you? I uh, got here a bit late. Glad you're here. Nevertheless, glad you're here for sure. Uh, and then some conversation there. And uh, oh, wait, there we go. Uh, hopefully you're doing well, John. You know, it, it's been a week. It's been a week. There have been enough tests. I, there are uh, plenty of blood drawn for me. I had uh, blood drawn as part of that MRI yesterday where I had 11 vials of blood drawn to figure out exactly what other sort of neurological markers that are appearing in my blood are appearing as part of that giant study I'm doing. Well, it's not really a giant study, but it's, it's a study that's being done through the University of Pennsylvania. So, well, I'm sure I'll know more about that as we move down the road for there, uh, too. Um... Let's see. What else is going on? I'm going to bring you up for a quick second, Paul. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to thank you personally for the live streams that you do, for the content you provide. Um, 
I definitely look up to you and um, I'm going to pay homage to a project that you've been doing um, with uh, Cat Mulvihill Hill uh, on Wednesdays that, that you ended this week uh, with Are We Live Now? Uh, it was a great show, but I think it also taught me how important that sort of back and forth and that sort of banter is on anything and everything in your case as it relates to live streaming. But you could definitely extend that argument to anything. So, Paul, thank you again for that show and thank, Kat, you, uh, thank you, Kat, for that show as well. Um, looking forward to the projects that you guys have coming down the road. Uh, more comments in the sense that uh, LT, how are you, man? How's everything in Utah? Is everything okay out there? Hope you're doing well this afternoon. Eh, I'm doing. I'm doing something. I'm doing okay. You know, wherever it is, it is. At least I'm not in a machine that's shaking left, right, and sideways. Oof. No joke. I was out of the machine. It was like a minute and a half. I, I, it took me a minute and a half to get off of that, that tray, that, that bed. It's not even a bed. It was very flat. But then for the next three to five minutes, it seemed like everything was shaking. They warned me 30 seconds. 30 seconds of that. It, it was definitely a lot more than 30 seconds. Believe me. Oof. Um... Gilly says, venture a risky, a risky or daring journey. It certainly is, isn't it? Especially as we learn more about it. Paul says, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you're doing for us, too. Thank you, man. Without question. Uh, our LT says, it's great, beautiful. And Sherry says, LT is absolutely in the house. There you go. Um, any big plans for the weekend? I'll throw that question out there. We don't usually go to that, that level of discussion, but let's, let's go. Anyone have any exciting plans for the weekend? I, as for me, I think, uh, trying to get everything in before the snow comes on Sunday is probably where my thought is. Just saying. I think there's at least four or five things I need to do. It'll get done tomorrow. Because Sunday, here comes the snow. So you have that. Um, let's see. Christina says, painting acrylic paints. Ooh. What uh, what sort of uh, painting or what sort of artwork do you want to do with the acrylic paints? Any, anything exciting? And uh, Sherry is reminding me that I sounded like Paulie with that accent. Well, you know, Paulie is from Philadelphia. I'm originally from New York. So there is there is a close sort of accent between the two. So it wouldn't surprise me if I sounded a little like uh, our dear friend Paulie. LT is, uh, LT is uh, scripting videos tomorrow for a recovering addict, a great recovery group that I'm a big proponent of. Uh, he does his show Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays on YouTube and Facebook and other sources. So definitely worth a look for sure. He's doing some promo stuff tomorrow, which uh, should be exciting. Jake, uh, Jake is, by the way, Jake, you've done an incredible job too with uh, with Recovering Addict. You, you've really held your own voice, have had really great content out there and, and a salute to you as well. Because um, we're going to use the old uh, tagline from the show, we do recover better together. And Jake, you absolutely personify that for sure. So thank you. Truth is, a lot of folks that are in recovery, in the recovering shows, uh, Real Recovery with Nicole, Sober James, all of you, you're doing a treasure trove of service for the community. And I am deeply, deeply appreciative and indebted to all of you. So thank you for what you do. Uh, let's see. He says, Amen. I um, I had a feeling this was going to be a quick one tonight. I really didn't have much else to talk about except for the test and the blood and the go forward for the MS, but also the story about my health and the weight loss and all that from a, just a 35,000 foot view, but also like... Super Bowl's not even this weekend, so we can't even talk about that. 
So it's just one of those very strange weekends where we're going to be left to our own to-dos and our own hobbies and our own devices, right? So that's the weekend that comes up uh, this weekend. Christina says 3D flowers. Well, that's really cool. That is really cool. Christina, I'm going to throw out an open question. You might say to yourself, hey, John, shouldn't you ask this question offline and in message? But no, I'm going to ask it on the show. At some point, Christina, I would love for you to be on the show at some point to talk about sleep. Because the things you do about sleep on on your show and your every sort of material that you produced out there is it's a really important story. It's a very important thing we need to talk about here. In the sense of how it ties into weight loss and stress and sobriety and co-addiction and compulsive gambling and all of that. So open question, open invite for you, Christina. would love to have you on the show at some point. Sherry's reminding us that she is working on her patients today. What happened? You okay? Hope everything is well. Paul says, people just like hanging out with you right now. Yeah, you know what? I like hanging out with all you too. You truly are family to me, all of you. Des says, hi, John. Hi, Des. How is everything in Australia? And Christina says, anytime, John, was waiting for you to ask. Well, here's the ask. Uh, Tuesday, we're talking about health. Thursday, we could definitely talk about sleep. I think it's a... Absolutely a follow up to that. And, um, well, I mean, did you hear that, Rox? I gotta get that graphic on screen first, don't I? Rox, she, she, she would want you to be on that show too. What? What did you just say? All right, I'll say it. I think, I think Rex might actually do that episode. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Christina, you have an ability to get that out of people. Thursday, 630 is good. We'll do all the testing like an hour before. We'd love to have you on the show. The um, Gilly asking a question that comes up on every other episode. What is the black object behind the white stuffed animal? Well, the white stuffed animal is Rex, who is a Triceratops who thinks he's a T-Rex. A recurring joke that has been going on now for four months. The black object behind Rex is a dartboard. Is a plastic tipped dartboard that is, yeah. It's something that I throw darts at between calls and whatnot. Absolutely. Yes, LT, you, you uh, 10 points for LT, but I'm gonna give 10 points to Christina as well. Yeah, it's the dartboard. And Christina says, cool and sure. Christina, can't wait to have you on the show. It'll be, uh, be really great to talk about sleep and also the things that are tied to sleep and the importance of sleep and how much, as a society, we don't get enough sleep. So, Christina, I can't wait to have you on Thursday, 6.30 Eastern. Uh, Sherry got her two chip yesterday. Very proud of her. <laughs> Sherry, congratulations on the two years. That That's awesome. That is really awesome. And, Sherry, everything you've done for the different groups... I have nothing but the utmost thanks and, 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 and love for you. That that's incredible. And Sherry, congratulations on your two years. Uh, I'll tease laughing. Yep. Yeah. The dartboard, dartboard. I've heard derogatory things of what that object was behind Rex. I won't repeat them, but one can only imagine, but yeah, it's a dartboard. Hi, hi. Um, congratulations, Sherry. It's awesome. Quick, uh, quick question for the uh, for the live streamers, which I, I never thought I'd be asking this question. But did we hear any details about uh, Alita for April? Because if there is, I would love to start plugging it on the venture forward and tell people about it. It's an incredible, incredible workshop, incredible 30, 31 days to figure out your story, but also understand this 
incredible world we have here in that of live streaming. So when I know more about it, if there is one, I will start talking about it because it is an incredible program. I did it back in August and I could thank Lita for the venture forward without question. Gelly says, you know, maybe I thought it was the scale you kept as a memento of success from the weight loss or something like that. Yeah, that kind of does look like a scale a little bit. I got, I got to hand it to you. That's not a bad guess, I think. I, um, yeah, I think so. I have a, I have a Salter, scale, a Salter scale up in the bathroom that I use. I used to have a larger scale that weighed up to 500 pounds. I don't need that anymore. So, but the Salter scale is good. I used to have something that was tied to my Fitbit. I don't even wear a Fitbit anymore, but yeah, just to have a basic electronic scale that you can have in, in any sort of level surface is, is all you need. It's, it's what's been working for me in the last two years and change. Uh, Sherry says, and who better than Des to present it to me as far as the sobriety, uh, the two year sobriety notice. Des is an amazing guy and Des, at some point I would love to have you back on the show too. You, your episode was phenomenal and I enjoyed that show a lot and my, uh, would love to have you back to talk more about that story for sure. Christina says, not yet. I hope we can join Lita in April. Let us know. Yeah. As soon as I hear more from the organization that does Lita, a organization called live streaming pros, uh, and, uh, one of the most uh, famous faces of live streaming pros and that of Laria Petrucci would love to know more about it. And as soon as I know more, you'll know more too. It'll be great to it'll be great to have more people doing Lita because it, it's such an important fun, but yet such an educational experience too. Marilyn is congratulating Sherry and Sherry is thanking everyone. Sherry, I think you would be good for Lita. I think I think that challenge would be good for you. I think it would be good for a lot of people that uh, are part of the different recovery groups and that of uh, LT and Recovering Addict, Real Recovery with Nicole, Sober James. I think there are a lot of people that have a great story to tell, a great voice that, that have done testimonials for those shows that may actually be a great live streamer themselves. So once I know more information on on when and if and whatever is going to happen with Lita for April, I will let everybody know about it because it is a program, workshop, marathon, challenge, challenge is the word, challenge that um, I'm definitely a big proponent of for sure. Uh, let's see. I think outside of that, Christina, we'll, we'll talk after the show about uh, Thursday. We'll love, uh, love having you on on Thursday. That'd be great. And uh, Des, you know, if you want to do that, uh, if you want to do a second episode, I'd love to have you on too. Anyone else too, if anybody has any show ideas, anyone has any sort of concepts they want to talk about, anybody wants to tell their story, I'll bring my email up again. You can email me at theventureforward at gmail.com. That is theventureforward at gmail.com. Would love to have you on the show or at least come up with ideas for the show and tell me about things you want to know more about. Because again, we, we cover things outside of the addictions as well. We talk about removing the roadblocks that stood in our way from living a better life, a more optimal life for ourselves. So if you have any ideas for the show or if you want to be a guest on the show, please email me, theventureforward at gmail.com. And Sherry says she will be in for Lita too. So as soon as I know more about how we're going to get people signing up for Lita and all that stuff, I will I will share all of that information on the venture forward and VF talks, because I think there are a lot of people that can tell their story and they tell their story really well. And I think there would be an audience and then some for that. Um, there are some people from the recovery groups that, that did lead it as well. Back in August, I, I had, uh, he didn't complete it. This is not any sort of rub by the way. So you know who I'm about to say, but Merck, you're great. 
You did great with the uh, with the, the the challenges that you did. I would love to see you do Lita in April. So, not necessarily that I'm throwing the gauntlet out right now, but Merck, let me know because we're doing Lita. I think I think we're doing Lita again in April. So, it'll be great to have you in the mix for that too. And I think on that. This is really a very short VF talk. So usually I go at least nine hours here. I'm kidding. I never go nine hours. Hang on. I don't, I never go three hours. Come on. What are you talking about, Rex? Ay, ay, ay. I gotta say, it's not really easy having him as a co-host. I'm just saying. He, he means well. But there are times where he's like, oh, oh, oh God, what the heck? It's like, yikes. But, you know, he's got an opinion or two. What can I say? Gilly says, I'm a venture forward in the bed now. That's, that's, uh, yeah. That's a good one. Well, you have a good night, Gilly. Good seeing you. And, uh,. Paul says, co-hosts are trouble. You know, oh, I didn't get that up there. That's the one. Co-hosts are trouble. Um, I don't think so, Paul. I think every time you're on the show, I think you're phenomenal. Every time Matt Haas is on the show, he's phenomenal. I think the uh, the group of people that do this show, the VF Talks, are an incredible group of people. I'm thankful for them. The people that do the main show are extraordinary people, too in telling their story. I want to quickly thank uh, JD for Tuesday, by the way, uh, for her story. That was, that was really well done and um, definitely a unique perspective about social anxiety. I think you told the story really well and I hope to have you on the show soon again too because I think there's more to talk about that. Um, yeah, Re Rex does think it's Rex does think it's his show. Rex, don't forget who, um, I don't pay you. I was going to say who pay, who signs the paycheck, but I really, this is like an internship, isn't it? Horrible. Horrible. LT says, yeah, she is. And Christina says, Paul, come on. I guess yeah, you have a little bit of a, Paul, I mean, you could jump on. I'll stick around for, for a few minutes or a couple hours, whatever you want. So, just saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Christina says, Paul, I'm trying to use your prop staring into the camera technique. Super cool. If you get a chance, definitely watch Paul Burke's stuff up on YouTube. Upon yes, yeah, yeah, of course I'm sure. Paul, would love for you to jump on. You, there's, there's the link and everything. I pinned it to you. Yeah, come on, come on over. <laughs> Sherry reminds everybody now. Now, LT Felice rocks. Felice does rock. Felice is phenomenal. And Felice, um, LT, if you ever want to do the show. Tuesdays, Thursdays, 4.30 Mountain. See, I don't have time for you guys. Paul Burke is the bomb. He is the bomb. He's a great friend. Definitely, he's the bomb, as they said back in the 90s. I guess that would make him the bomb diggity? I don't know. Like, something like that. So I'm going to wait a minute. Uh, and now I got people saying, oh, see, now this is what's happening. Now people are like, come on, Paul, I got to do it. Yeah, Paul, do it. Sherry says, LT says, I would love to. We'll have to set something up. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about it because that'll be, um, that'll be great for sure. Yeah, I mean, um, I think how many VF talks have I done? Someone, someone keeping count of these probably have done what 15 VF talks, maybe 20. I think Paul, you've done a handful. I know Matt's done more than a handful. Sometimes we get, uh, we get Jax. Sometimes we get Patty. 
sometimes we get don't don't be don't be upset if I forget you. Sometimes we get Sammy, the the 15, 16 year old maestro with the the pianos and all of the all of his instruments and stuff, and his you know massive collection of AV equipment from wherever, maybe B and H, maybe Adorama. I don't know. Could be any of those. I don't think Callie's done a VF talks yet. I'm just saying, you know, Callie, Miss Fabro, if you don't mind me in saying, would love for you to jump on one of these. There's Paul. I would love for you to join the shows too at some point. Oh, there, there's the man, the myth, the legend. There, love there's Paul Burke. There's Paul. I would love for you to join the shows too at some point. Uh-oh. Oh, I hear there, me there's again. The man, the myth, the legend. There, love there's Paul know. Burke. There's Paul. I would love for Okay. Now I can't hear you. Oops. Oops. Is this is this just a foray for you to do that stare down contest that you were doing on Facebook before? Can't hear you. Nothing. Bupkus. What about that? Yes! Yes! There's a win. You got it. Oh baby. Nice. Oh baby. Yeah. A uh, couple of comments real quick. Uh, VF talks are amazing, super interesting. Christina says hi, Paul, in capital letters. That's in, hey. as they say, oh, she's wow. insinuating she's screaming that at you. So she's screaming hi, Paul, at you. Oh, wow. Hi, Paul. Hi. And Sherry's going to count and do the, the accounting through um, uh, her, her law firm, her big four consultancy in KPMG or whatnot. She's going to count the 25 or 26 and wait, KPMG, Price Waterhouse. What, what's she doing over there? Mr. Burke, how you doing? I'm good. Can you hear that crack? I, I jacked up my shoulder. I don't know how. How did you jack up? Your, you don't know how. You know, they sort of. I don't know. I mean, the heaviest thing I've picked up is cats. I got All one right. fat cat, but I don't think that's probably. I don't know what happens. But it's a delight to be here. It's Look a it's a pleasure show. and honor to have you on the show, my friend. It's a pleasure and honor to be here, sir. How are you? Uh, you know, everything stopped spinning, which is good. Glad things have stopped spinning. That's a huge plus. I just didn't realize a, an MRI machine can do that to you. A 7T MRI machine can... Like that. Uh, no, I didn't know that... The most I've ever put into an MRI machine is my leg. I've never like, because you had to go head first right into it. Head first, yeah. I don't know. Did they make it? Did they make it look like a canoe? Have you heard about that? Where some children's hospitals make the MRI machine look like a canoe, and they tell the kids you got to stay really still because you don't want any water to get into the canoe. They try to make it more engaging and fun because MRIs are terrifying. There's, um, they, they, it's a research MRI, so I don't think they were looking for the fun factor. Um, there wasn't any sort of panoramic view of like Hawaii on the roof of these things as some MRI machines, open MRIs, panoramic MRIs would have. This was basically a, a research MRI that's in one of the basements of the neurology department. Was it neurology? Yeah, it was the neurology department of Penn Medicine. Great machine, incredible machine, but like, oh my God. How much do you think an MRI machine costs? I could probably look that up. Um, I heard, I heard a number that wasn't, that sounded fictitious. I said, oh, someone was selling for $20,000. No, no, these machines are massive amounts of money. So state of the art is 3 million. Mm -hmm. a a used low field MRI who doesn't need one of those I know everybody needs one is 150,000 oh, but that's... as expensive as 1.2 million you think for that amount of money they could throw $300 at an artist to paint it so it looks a little more interesting as you're yeah, it's it. something that I know Christina is doing watercolors or something she could do something for the roof of that I mean there are things we could, Sarah Steele could do stuff I mean th th come on this is this is marketing this is marketing mm -hmm. 
also everybody's always everybody's painting every building in the city these days like every wall in the city needs to be painted with art what about mri machines i don't know i'm just talking out loud right now but come on what about like paint those inner city mri machines hmm mm -hmm. a nice mural mural that for the side of it yeah of course yeah See, this is why I enjoy this. We have these deep thoughts like this. We're really, this is, this is yeah. Uh -oh, Kelly says, broken leg me. story time, Kelly says. When when did you break your leg? No, I didn't break my leg. Okay. Um, I, why were they scanning me? <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I totally forgot. For shiggles, Paul, they were, they were scanning your leg for shiggles. Um, my knee. So I have, um, my knee is not great, but I don't want to get surgery because, <laughs> because I'm going to will it back to health. That works. Um, I, yeah, I just don't have, look, John, I'm sure you know this, like being big, mm -hmm. not great on the knees. So uh, not uh, really. I just have some damage. Nope. It's not. Turns out those knees are pretty important. Um, they're they're uh, they're quite essential. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sherry says um, fastest sleep in history, and Christina coming up with uh, the bid of 1.2 million. Ooh, that's impressive. Paul, yeah is is the, that available? Is that available on FlexPay? <laughs> yep, fifty dollars a month forever. Forever <laughs> gets you a sweet MRI machine. And then you got to buy a doctor to be able to work it. Yeah. So. But that's, that's, that's additional. And, and, you know, you have to, maybe they sell them on Sundays or I have no idea. Watch HSN yeah. or QVC or something. <laughs> they do. Up next, we have this beautiful <laughs> MRI machine. It'll go great with anything. Does it, does it come with uh does it come with one of those Instapots? So if I buy the MRI machine, oh, yeah. do you throw in the Instapot as well? Because I would love to make some chili. See, John, let me ask you a question. When you mm. got out of the MRI machine, what did you want? Comfort food. Absolutely. You're in a stressful environment. You want comfort food after that. So of course they're going to throw an Instapot. Chili, baby. That's comfort. I think it is. Is that a comfort the, food? Maybe not know, enough carbs. Be yeah, I, and I think the way that day was rolling, I, I, I left the house at like 6.15, 6.30. I sat in traffic for a little while. I didn't eat anything. I didn't drink anything. I was just looking for food. It doesn't have to be comfort food. I think I, I gravitated to Starbucks. I think that's what ended up winning. I'm not going to lie. Have you ever marveled, I have marveled at this, mm. how quickly, because next to my house, there's a McDonald's and Starbucks. Oh no! I revealed my location. Um, ah! But <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll cut that out. I'll cut that out in post when we we put the recording up. I'll, I'll yeah, so, sure. Appreciate it. McDonald's, man, they are a machine getting you through that line, that drive-through. Like Starbucks, it is so slow, so slow. But McDonald's, man, they are just it is amazing precision and just speed. I am always impressed about that. I, I think I they've know. spent so much time trying to figure out the optimal way to get someone through the drive through line. And then they, McDonald's was like, they're starting to put double drive throughs so They started doing that in the 2000s. So a lot yeah, of the McDonald's cool. have the double, you know, the double drive through mm -hmm. I have a thought about that. Do you want mm. to talk about it? Can I yes. rant for a second? Anything and everything on, on the VF Talks. Great. Those double drive throughs do you ever feel guilty if your line is moving faster than the other line and you don't look at them in the eye because you're like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry this line is going to be quicker than yours. I know you pulled in before me. I don't want to be in this position. If I could, if I could, I did it last week. I actually stopped and just waited until the person who actually technically was ahead of me could go forward because I've been in your position. I don't, there's there's a quiet rage mm. in the McDonald's. A quiet rage. There's a quiet rage. I don't know. Maybe I'm insane or just 
this is a mark of somebody really overweight and wants his food. That, <laughs> <laughs> that when people are passing you, are like, wait a second, I already ordered. I'm stuck here. But the double line, man, it's it's not equal. I, I guess no. if anything, it's teaching everybody that life isn't fair. I guess McDonald's is giving us some important lessons in life. What is that? The new tagline? Life isn't fair at McDonald's. And I guess it would drive me to order more, truthfully. If I was so angry that I wasn't moving through the line faster, I'd probably order more if I got to the... It's interesting. That's an interesting tactic. I figured you got McDonald's. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't see that sort of thing at, at, at your at your Burger Kings. You don't see that no. sort of thing at Wendy's. Although at the Chick-fil-A's, they have people that will come through the line and take your order if the line is like 50 deep. I, I've seen that before. Ooh. They are good. If, if mm. we were ranking, we should do this sometime. Uh, you know, we should rank the speed and quality of drive through lines. Chick-fil-A, across the board, the best. You can't beat yeah. that. Um, but McDonald's is, is pretty close. Pretty, pretty close. Pretty, pretty, pretty close. Pretty, Sherry pretty says, close. pretty, pretty, pretty close. Uh, Sherry oh. says, like that color, Paul might try it herself. Oh, I love it. I love this color. By the way, I just realized my microphone was quite a ways away from me. That's a real newbie mistake. Hey, everybody. You know what? I, I Even if you sound like you're in the other room, quality stuff. Always quality stuff from you. Right back at you, sir. Yeah. Right back at you. Gilly so says if you... How does one prepare for... How does one prepare for what? Oh, you said you're preparing for a snowstorm. How does one oh, yeah. I, I, I think laying in the fetal position and crying. I think that's how I do it. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I think a couple of utterances it. of why, why the hell, why, why the, why, what the hell's going on here, why. Yeah. This year I'm moving. I'm moving somewhere else where this won't happen. Said the forty-three-year-old that lives in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I, 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 if there was any time, I think, yeah, yeah, it, it might happen. I know I was humoring oh, yeah. that idea during Lita. We we talked about it oh, during yeah. Lita. I was like thinking about moving. There's a lot of nice places that you don't have to deal with all that stuff. And bring Kelly's comment back up for a second. If you invent the half MRI machine, half fish aquarium, get a scan with fish and tropical coral reef around, you'll be rich. Gilly, my man? Yeah, that's brilliant. I don't know how one grows a coral reef, but if we can. Brilliant. Call call your friends at Siemens. Get it done. <laughs> and maybe if we were able to just create coral reefs within MRIs, we should station all those MRIs right next to the, the current... Um, sea level so when the seas rise they will just slowly absorb a coral reef right. and then you know next steps yeah make global warming work sherry says yes that would help relax you for sure because you have to stay so still so in that oh, machine good. with the i woke so i fell asleep during my MRI, Sherry, and I I literally shook, a, you know, like you kind of do that like little shake awake thing. Um, sometimes when you wake up, I did that. And then I tried to stay so still and they're like, um, Paul, we're going to have to start over again. And this is like the last like 20 seconds. Like you were right at the end and I do a little shake awake and they're like, and you can't deny it. I mean, they got all the science right there proven. You're a dumb, dumb, and shook. So 45 more minutes. It was a while. Oh, my God. It was a while. Christina says, Paul, your hair is absolutely the perfect color. It's so awesome. Thanks. Oh, my gosh. John, listen. I, what a discovery. There is stuff you can put in your hair that maintains the color. And it will add pigment to your hair so if like for instance this 
months ago would be gone by now. It would have washed out. But I'm using the stuff where it like actually absorbs pigment to maintain the color so you can actually make it darker or lighter. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, game changer. The, the stress I have going into a shower, gone now. Because I know I control my future. It's like night and day, Paul. It's like night and day. I feel I feel free for the first time. Well, congratulations on your freedom. <laughs> Gilly says McDonald's because life isn't fair. New commercial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get it trademarked. Make millions. Mm -hmm. Along with the coral reef with the MRI and all that shit. Life isn't fair. McDonald's. That's why you're eating your problems. Do, 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 do. It's not fair. <laughs> that says, I'm old fashioned. It's, it's faster to go inside to get a meal at McDonald's than sit in a car. Oh, Des, have you, have you tried the new drive throughs My man, you, you got to get, get behind that wheel. Treat yourself. You don't have to interact with anybody except for the people taking your money and the person who hands you the food. It's great. <laughs> Sherry says, or use the, or use the stupid kiosk they have installed. I always go to a person too. So there there's, there's a little bit of union with the, the Australian contingent here because Des and Sherry oh, are both Australian. Australians. Oh, yeah. Got it. Okay. Down under. She was, uh, she was lip reading, by the way. Oh. What kiosks? They have kiosks? Yeah. Where? A lot, a lot of the fast foods have uh, kiosks now. Burger King has kiosks. Oh, I guess it shows how little I actually walk into stores anymore. I, did I? <laughs> I don't think I told you this, John. <laughs> I don't walk into stores. Did I tell you? That's that beyond me. I, so I, I have this watch right here. And I wear it. It's like a step counter. But it, it tells you all these other metrics. And I walked into a Walgreens like two months ago because I had to get a, a flu vaccine. And I literally was walking down the halls thinking, I have, there are so many things in here. I have not been inside a store for probably like six months legit and i was very stressed out because i haven't actually been to a physical place in a very long time i'm very cautious mm -hmm. little little bit of a germaphobe a strong germaphobe and literally my watch on the way out was like hey uh you should take a break you seem really stressed out and i'm like yeah you're 100 percent right watch i've been inside a building and it's terrifying are you like howie mandel as far as being the germaphobe is it that level no, it's not that level. It's, mm. um, well, so here's, so here's the thing. Right before we went into this whole, like, shutdown, before everything happened in March, mm -hmm. I don't know if, I don't think I told you this. Again, I fear becoming an old man who just repeats stories. So please stop me. I don't want to be that person. The Help way you out. tell a story, it's perfect. You could tell it 105 times each time, just as entertaining as the time before. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's very nice of you. Um, but I've heard people retell stories. It's not true. Uh, <laughs> so I, right before the whole shutdown, all this stuff, all this stuff happened, I got one of those, uh, you know where you wear a mask and you run as hard as you can and they give you like this oxygen level and how well you process oxygen? I did that test. Hmm. Because the club I went to said, oh, you should do this. And I'm like, all right. Um, they told me, Wow, we haven't seen somebody this low before. Your lungs literally process oxygen like a 75-year-old man. Oh, my God. This happened literally about three weeks before the world shut down. And they said, hey, you know who's most susceptible to this new thing? Are people who can't process oxygen and breathe well. And I'm like... Oh. Oh no, that's me. Oh God. By the way, everybody, I'm 39 years old, pretty far away from 75. So 
he literally, the guy reading my results literally said, oh, wow. And these are trained professionals who are trying to get more money out of you. Apparently, they're, they're trained. <laughs> so anyways, going into this whole thing, I was like, oh, man, I am like target number one for this, uh, you know, situation. So I've just been more cautious because of that. Mm. Christina has a great idea. She says, uh, you need to do a DIY, uh, a DIY, DIY, D. Yeah, DIY. Do it yourself. A DIY on, on hair coloring live. <laughs> I should. Like, hey, everybody. Do you have some root thickener? Boy, that's a game changer. I've learned about that, too. John, isn't it interesting how little you know about something until mm. you decide to be interested in it? And yes. then once you are, you're like, oh, my God, there are so many layers to this world. What, like live streaming? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like live streaming or hair. John, hmm. I don't know. I never knew about root thickener. Didn't know. Didn't know it was a thing. Changed your world. It changed your world, Paul. Changed your world. I thought the roots you had were the roots you had to walk through life with. It's not true. John, not true. By you the can, way, Matt is out buying ice cream. Boys up. Oh. Gotta thick them up. What are you going for, Matt? Are you going chocolate, vanilla, butter pecan, strawberry, Neapolitan, Rocky Road? Phone lines are open. Uh, <laughs> Sherry says, Australia has a computer-like menu where you can order which they call a kiosk, Paul. Damn, Sherry, you guys, you guys have it so good down there. Just take me with you. Sherry, take me with you. That sounds magical. Hey, Sherry, when, when you take Paul, can you take me as well? That sounds amazing. Yeah. Just saying. Asking for a friend. Hashtag asking for a friend. <laughs> Sherry, charter a boat. Let's all go over that. Des, Des says, I can't do that, Sherry. Um, John or JV, hmm. what do you prefer? I don't know. I, I'm I'm equal opportunity on the ice cream. It could be anything. I like uh, I like any of those flavors I just mentioned. Oh, my name. Oh, my name. I got it. John. John's fine. JV. John. John whatever you want. You don't have you don't have an ice cream preference. Oh man, it's cookie dough. It's cookie dough for me. Cookie 100%. dough. Jam some cookie dough. You talking about in Jerry's cookie dough? Oh, I'm I'm a look. I'm a I'm a cookie dough. I'll take any kind of cookie dough I can get. I don't care where it's coming from. It can, I'll take it. Matt says, uh, Oreo Blizzard, baby. Oh, make sure they do that whole thing where they turn it upside down to prove that it's thick. Love you too, Christina. Good seeing you tonight. She also she also said Love she also said before she she also said before she left, uh, for Valentine's Day, live coloring your hair. Oh, so I have I have a friend who actually does it for me, which makes life a lot easier because she's very very good, and a delight to hang out with. Hmm. So, Sherry says they also have an app for your phone too, but Des and I are too old and not tech savvy at all. That's kind of so, harsh. Yeah, I'm aware of the app. I've never used it, but I'm aware of it. Dang it! Now I really want a burger. <laughs> the the power of suggestion. Power of suggestion and the power of the golden arches, right? Yeah. What mm. forces? What forces? <sighs> what else are you doing this weekend? Watching any Let's movies? See. Um, might be a couple movies I watch. I don't know. I um, nice. it's not. There's no football this weekend because it, it's the weekend where they would have played the Pro Bowl, but they're not doing that. So there's well, nothing yeah. there. The, uh, as far as hockey, the Rangers are horrible, so I'm not going to watch them anytime soon. And uh, I guess I could watch the Sixers, but hey, what's up with that? <laughs> are the Sixers pretty bad? Sixers are great. Sixers are oh. fantastic. Sixers, as much as a, a strike and blow to many of the people that live in this particular area, the Sixers are not my team. I am born in New York, so obviously, and as I, I hate admitting this, 
I'm a Knicks fan, or was, Ooh. you know, when they did give a crap. Yeah. Can you jump over? Do you feel like it would be a terrible jump for you to go to the Nets? Is that a is that a bridge too far? Oh, to go to oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess I could. I mean, yeah. it, hey, it worked for Marv Albert, didn't it? Hmm? Well, Marv used is to it? be the play-by-play guy for the Knicks for like 157 years, and then the last five, ten years, he was doing local ball. He, he went to be the Nets play-by-play guy. Oh, I had no idea. I am, I am a, I am a California boy. I don't, I haven't, I don't know much about New York other than, um, yeah, I know very little about New York. Very Sherry's little. reminding us about the beauty of the blizzard, layer upon layer upon layer. Dang, Sherry, Des, Matt, you're killing me here. I want burgers mm. and blizzards now. Yeah. You just do you, do you want to take the order from five guys and 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 get get the burger all the way? Is that is that what's happened now? Is that's what's going? That's what's happening. Right? Five guys is good. Mm. There's a little burger place that I guess is closing this month, which is around the corner from here. I've never been, never been, but I feel like I should go. I feel like this is. I feel like my unconscious is trying to make an excuse to just get some fattening burger in its system. It's like, Paul, you should go and support this man. He's going out of business. Yeah. Give him $10 at least. He means well. Yeah. It's supposed to be a great place. Never been. I don't know. Sherry says chocolate flavor in any shape or form for me. That gives you a lot of options. Yeah. Sherry, you have quite a few options and uh des will stick to cricket oh yeah cricket's a thing mm. i never had cricket flavored ice cream though that that doesn't sound appetizing at all hey 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 it's some uh, real wild stuff there some real wild stuff um i did not know that do you understand cricket have you uh, ever understood it? it? It's supposed to be like baseball, but there's only two bases, and uh, home run is worth six, but you're always shooting for the four, and then there's this, and there's that. And like, I, oh, wow. And the you games go on for five than... years or something, because, you know, yes, I don't know how I you... I don't understand reg- that. I don't understand how games go on so long. I don't... I, I don't conceptually understand that. Even coming from baseball, where there's, like, technically... No time limits. I mean, what's the longest it's ever gone? Seven hours? Yeah, and you're saying least. games go days? That's insane. Whole weeks. Goes on for That's weeks. That's insane. Sherry says double cheeseburger, then open it up and put it in the fries. You know, that's like a Pittsburgh style, right? You think about the Pittsburgh and their affinity for french fries. They'll put french fries on salad. They'll put french fries in burgers. So What? Is that true? Yes. You guys will? Well, not in the will. Western, western end of the Commonwealth, yeah. I knew there was something I liked about Pittsburgh. Never mm-hmm. put my finger on it. I love me some good fries. Road trip to Primanti's. That sounds great. Christina says MRIs, coral reefs, drive throughs drying hair, uh, dying hair, and crickets. I, 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 or oi, oi. Well, I guess for the Australians, oi, oi, oi. There you go. Oi, oi, oi. The show's had it all. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. Right. That's for you, Sherry and Des. Love you. <laughs> oh. You got uh, you got a big show tonight. You got uh, you playing the games. You got the uh, got doing this. You got uh, what are you doing over there? You're doing, you're doing the games. You're doing that thing hey. you do. Um, you got the games. You're playing the games <laughs> with the, the the hunt, and you're trying to avoid the thing. And then it's, I don't know who did it. I don't know who did it. I gotta put that person in. And then of course, you have people hacking you all the time. Oh, you mean Among Us? <laughs> Among Us. You know, that yeah. game. Uh, we're playing that Sunday morning. If you want to jump in and play, sir, we're going to play that on Sunday morning. You would like it. I think you would really get a kick out of it. It's a, I, it's a I watch you guys game. play that all the time. It's like, uh, I'm not I'm not touching that. Who, who? Someone may hack my account. Oh, man. No, you're safe. You're totally safe. You should you know. get in and play it and get on your microphone because it's best when everybody can talk to each other and try to convince each other they're not the killer. That's fun. Um, that's Sunday. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow night at five is games. 
Mm -hmm. Tonight, I don't think I'm going to live stream. I'm going to take, I'm going to shoot a sketch. So I've been, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do a video every day. That's my, mm. that's my mission for the next. That's month. when you had that sort of look, you're, you're testing your, your, your vision to the camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you like that? Right. You like that look? Um, or the pondering look, the pondering look. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So going to work on that tonight, which should be fun. And then uh, I think finish the Tom Hanks new movie, um, News at the End of the World, or something like that. It's okay. Something like that. I'm not. It's all right. It's not great. When uh, when are you doing that? Uh, I heard now, it's just rumor. The Emmy Emmy Award nominated series that you do with Callie on the, on the advice. Oh, Callie's going to be uh, Thursday. Well, Thursdays. Yeah. And I'm kind of excited about this. I'm setting this up today, too. I'm setting up a um, Google Voice number so people can call in if they want and leave um, things like situations and advice they need and help. And then we will listen to it and play ones we want to answer or can't answer. So, mm. um It'll be like a little therapy helpline, which I'm hmm. excited about that. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of curious when you open that line for the advice show, mm -hmm. what a certain 15, 16 year old kid from North Jersey will put on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure we'll hear all sorts mm -hmm. of words, but Hey, isn't that a great way to learn today's common terms? What an opportunity, what an opportunity to learn it's it's a treasure trove of humanity and culture, I would say. Mm -hmm. An opportunity to connect with people. Heading Listen. it up with the peeps. You're heading it up with the peeps. I'm hitting it up with the peeps. Perfect way of saying it. Des is, uh, likes the World Cup baseball only played in America. There you go. Good mm. for you. Cool, cool, cool. Shit. Sherry's reminding us that you aim for the wicket. I guess that's their version of a strikeout in cricket. You got to aim for the wicket, that little thing between the two the two pieces of wood, and you knock the thing down, and then you strike out someone, and then they're, like, banished from the country or something. Oh, you know who aims for the wicket? All those stormtroopers in Return of the Jedi. Oh, oh, oh mighty. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, oh my. Sherry says, oh, maybe I'll fit it in in America. Merka, Merka. Merka. Sherry says, oi, oi, oi. And Sherry tells us that she loves us, too. Oh, oh. I got, I got a question. And if it's too much inside baseball here, I totally understand. And, and albeit it was worth asking. But I, I was thinking about this. That, that incredible show you do on Wednesdays. I understand mm -hmm. you guys are working on bigger things and everything, but like, what 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 does the viewing audience do now? We're going to miss you guys. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was it. So, I the audience was awesome. Like, I loved hanging out with everybody. It was super fun. Um, I don't know. I think we were just kind of like talking about it and we're like, this is, a, this is a lot of fun, but it just kind of takes a lot of work and we're, <laughs> I don't want to speak for Kat. I'll speak for myself. I'm bad at boundaries. Like I will very often. <laughs> Me too. Like, it's fantastic. Oh, there you go. Then my man, you're going to, you're going to get this for sure. I just kind of keep wanting to do more and more. And then I kind of look behind me and I'm like, I'm doing a lot. And I'm not like giving my all towards one thing. Mm. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you're bored where you keep track of the days you haven't drank, the amount you, the weight you've lost. Like you stay so focused on that. And I kind of think that's what, what was that? It's the board. The board is the thing that keeps me focused on it. It's like I see that number. I see the number of days I put together. I see the weight on the far left. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. absolutely. And it's that and it's that focus that I think we both kind of want, where we're kind of getting pulled in a lot of different directions. And it's like, all right, we both we both enjoy this thing a lot. We both enjoy 
doing live streaming. Let's kind of focus on the stuff that we that is growing the the most for us. I don't know. And also, like I said, like we'll probably do shows here and there every once in a while because it's fun. Like, I mean, you know, hanging out and talking with Kat, she's a smart person. It's nice. It's like uh, you could do like the the Christmas special or something. It's oh, uh, it's a special. It's a feel good. Are we live now? Christmas. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That'll be really fun. So we'll do stuff for sure. Sherry says, uh, Des and I will be on Zoom at 8 p.m. Mountain Time if you want to join us. Yeah, I mean, let me know. PM, uh, you can PM, PM me the link. I'm not sure if I'll be around at 10 Eastern, but if you PM me the link, I might stop by and say hi for sure. Do they stream as well? No, I, I think it's more tied to, to the recovery. It's a Zoom group. But yeah, I mean, hey, I'll, I'll plug it. There it is. 10, 10 o'clock tonight. 10 Eastern, 8 Mountain, 7 Pacific. 3.30 alleyway there's I don't know, some, some time there. 10, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, 8 Mountain. Oh, you know what's cool is the last couple days I've had this guy, uh, what's his name, Vishvail hmm. from India pop into my stream. Every time I say his name, I think I'm mispronouncing it, but he literally helped me out phonetically. So Vishvail um, from India pop in. It was very cool. He told me where he's from. It's very neat. I was like, oh, wow, this world is so huge. I had no idea that was a part of India or the region and the name and the food. He told me <coughs> the food that's popular there. It was just kind of a neat little, I don't know. It was like my own personal parts unknown episode. You're, you're building your Asian Pacific uh, audience there. You got you got India. And, and it's about you, you make, Yeah. I was about to say, when is the Paul Berg experience expanding <laughs> to Asia? I got to get into India. That's what they say. Once you're in India, yeah. you've made it. Right. If you make it in India, you can make it anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's the New York but of Asia. It's, uh, I'll tell you right now, you know, it, when, when your numbers, when, when you've reached critical mass exposure in Bangalore, you got something going for you. I'm just saying. What? You've made it in Bangalore? <laughs> right this mm. way, sir. I'm on my way to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Or dare I say, Bollywood. <laughs> Tell Spielberg he can wait. He can. <laughs> yeah. Hold my calls. So, this is fun. I enjoy just hanging out. I'm glad. I'm glad yeah, me too. I'm glad on. you jumped on. Yeah, this is great. Um, but now I'm hungry. So now you're hungry. <laughs> we talked. We talked about all these burgers. We talked about mm -hmm. all the. We talked about the blizzards. We talked about this. I mean, I, I think Christina tied it perfectly with the with the list of uh, that sort of show prep list. Uh, Christina also says you haven't made it until you made it in Mumbai. So something to shoot for. But there it is. Life goals are important. That's right. Well. If you decide to do something tonight, I'll jump on. If not, I'll definitely see you for what you're doing tomorrow. And then we got the Sunday morning thing with the thing with the people and the and the spaceship and the the, the thing, the run of the round. Yeah, and the, so there's murder. Someone's uh, it's, yeah, but it's not the murder game with the trivia. That's another game. Not to be confused. It's it's different. Yeah, if you want to fill your day with your Sunday morning with murder, join me, won't you? Yes. <laughs> If you're just killing for Sunday morning, join me at 8 a.m. Pacific. Yep. Thanks. That's a great promo. Cut it. Print it. There you go. Thank you. Can we, can we get that? Can we isolate that? Can we? Good. <laughs> cool. This was fun. Thanks, man. Thanks for letting me jump on. Mr. Burke, an honor and pleasure as always. I hope you have a great night, yeah, and I will time. see you this weekend sometime on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Cool, cool. See you guys later. Bye. See ya. Paul Burke, ladies and gentlemen. The Paul Burke. He's available on YouTube at Paul Burke. Uh, great, great talent. Very funny man. Definitely watch his stuff for sure. A uh, couple more comments. Gilly says, my life goal. My life goal is to eat a blizzard and burger in my aquarium MRI machine. 
You're on the record at 6.40 p.m. Friday, at 6.40 p.m. Eastern Time, Friday, January 29th. There it is. Blizzard, Burger, Aquarium, MRI Machine. You got it. You got it. You're winning. I'm telling you. Christina says Among Us is addictive. Sherry says you're welcome too, Paul. JB can hook, us, hook you in. Christina says bye-bye, Paul. And uh, Christina says bye-bye, John and Rex. Well... I think we're going to put a giant bow on it. I think that's it. Putting a giant bow on it, calling it a night. And I will tell you the same thing I tell you at the end of every single VF Talks, every single Venture Forward. Please, stay safe, stay sane, stay strong, stay sober. I'll see you on Tuesday night when we talk about health and overall look at health and how the mind and the body connect, especially in the events of the last six weeks. We'll talk about that and we will have Christina... Sleep guru, sleep expert on the show on Thursday night. She'll be on six, Thursday at 6.30, 3.30 Pacific. Uh, to- story about health, Tuesday, 6.30, 3.30 Pacific. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Stay safe out there. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Good night. Oh, oh, I forgot one other thing. A special surprise at the end. See if you pick it up. Sun in my eyes It can get better than when she makes that smile Yeah, she's got that style that makes you think she's made out of gold She's turning up the volume on the radio Hey.